Hello everyone, it's old guardian here. The Hallows End event has just started in Warcraft Rumble and in this guide video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this event. Hallows End started today, October 16th and it's going to last until November 6th so it's a three week event. There's a special event map, there's special event only minis, there's weekly, there's daily modifiers, we get to play in Darkshire defending that. We get to fight against Verwogen in various spooky maps. We get to defend Darkshire also against Headless Horsemen. So lots of stuff coming, things changing a little bit every day. The first thing that people have been asking me about is where is the special event map? And the special event map is right there in that middle quest. Yeah, they're using the quest interface for this. So if you pick the middle quest, the one with the pumpkin head in it, then you go to the special modifier for this event. But yes, this does mean that if you're regularly capping your quest, you may need to surrender some of these quest fights in order to get progressing kill challenges and such. But overall, even if you start with zero quests, you will still have easily enough to complete the whole event. It's a quite complex event and it features some of the best things we have seen from Rumble events so far and some of the worst things that we have seen from Rumble events so far. Before I get into more details, my channel is currently sponsored by Stream Elements. These are some of the sponsorships that they want me to get my audience to try out some games and then I get paid based on how many people have installed the games and how far they have played. So if you want to support the channel, you could install any of these four games already installing them supports the channel playing a little bit supports the channel playing a lot supports the channel a lot more but even fairly modest effort installing the game playing it for around 15 minutes to reach the first goal would already be a great support if you need a break from rumble if you just want to support all the rumble content that i create then afk journey call of dragons warpath and rise of kingdoms installing and playing these on pc only though would really help me out. You can find the install links for these games down below in the description. And in return, I try to help you with this Hallows End event. So the reward tree. The reward tree is the bad kind of reward tree. Again, you need to buy all parent nodes in order to advance. So you can never go two rows deep without buying everything, everything from before. So yeah, this is really annoying tree to climb. It's going to cost you 201,651 tickets to get everything in the tree. It's going to cost you 17,650 tickets to get Dire Battlings, because you have to buy everything before Dire Battlings, and then you can access and buy the Dire Battlings, so we know exactly how many tickets it's going to take. No options there. Dire Battlings won't be on the grid until Season 10, so currently you can only get them from this reward tree. And this reward tree only gives you a total of 4 stars for Dire Battlings, and one of those is quite at the bottom of the tree and you need all those stars to even get them to uncommon so yeah that's pretty rough then you need 84,650 tickets to get headless horseman headless horseman once you own headless horseman headless horseman is going to be on the grid but only during this event so after this event you cannot acquire and you cannot improve the rarity of headless horseman so it's rare omatic time Get the Headless Horseman, get at least the first star. There's overall 8 stars for Headless Horseman in the reward tree, so not that many. But with Rare o Medic and Cycling the Grid a little, you can upgrade Headless Horseman during this event. And note that once you reach the lower point where the Headless Horseman is, then there's two identical looking heads, one for 8,000 tickets, one for 3,000. The 3,000 tickets is not the Headless Horseman, it's just a portrait. 8,000 tickets, that's the real Headless Horseman. So you'd need 2,651 tickets in order to get everything from the tree. How many tickets can you get? Overall, there are 228,200 tickets available from the challenges. And every time you buy a daily offer with coins, you're also going to get 500 tickets. So you can get quite a few tickets from there too. However, 32,000 tickets are gated behind real money purchases. Two bundles and the Azeroth's Blessing. And these have been somewhat bugged again. So yeah, I'm not even sure if you're always going to get those tickets or not. Hopefully Blizzard will be able to sort them out during this event. By the way, they rolled out compensation for people who bought the user bundle and didn't get the tickets from the user event. They all got 1000 coins. So that compensation at least was pretty good. So yeah, you can probably buy even if this bugged. Maybe, maybe wait a little bit and see what Blizzard is going to do. 
Then there's going to be 15,000 tickets from Rare Headless Horseman, and you can only get 8 stars from the event tree, so you're going to have to get some more from Grid or from Bundles, so that might not be easy depending on how much gold you have saved. And then there's 14,000 tickets are also available from PvP, so you also need to play some PvP in order to get close to the, close to the absolute maximum number of tickets. The ticket progress is a little bit awkward because there's lots and lots and lots of soft gating. So there's lots of challenges that are not available until a specific quest modifier comes up. So you won't be able to do most of these challenges yet and then you have to wait and then you can miss those. So yeah, that's kind of rough. Because, for example, Werewogen. Werewogen is only available during week 2 of the event. So if you can play only week 1 and week 3, you're going to miss out on the whole Werewogen thing. So yeah, there's that. Also, many of these quest modifiers are applied to quests. So if you have reached the quest cap, you may need to intentionally lose some games in order to keep access to the modified quest so you can keep doing it. But if you're free to play, you can expect a fairly slow start to the event because week one doesn't actually give you that many tickets. If you're looking for seven days, it's going to give you 2000 tickets. Then you might be able to get 50, maybe 30 daily offers. The free offers also count and everything bonus in the free offers also count so you get the free offer and then maybe you get a big red button and maybe you get an epic bonus so that's already three daily offers so 15 30 during the first week that's 2500 4000 tickets if you play survive dark share 30 times then that's going to be 2700 tickets also availability of that after week one is a little bit questionable we know dark share is not available during week two it's coming back for week three for the headless horseman but can you survive headless horseman so we don't know that yet so that's probably the main thing that you want to do week one then there's skill skeletons with skeletons in dark share which can be done on the headless horseman week as well that's 2500 tickets overall then there's jackal lanterns Summon 300 Jekyll Landers for 3,000 tickets. Defeat 90 Necromancers for another 3,000 tickets. So you're going to get around 15,700, 17,700 tickets during week one if you grind very hard. And it was 17,650 to unlock the Dire Battlings. So getting Dire Battlings week one is kind of rough. Once you manage to unlock the Dire Battlings, they will give you a bunch more event progress because then you can play limited time Hallows and Minis and the Battlings do count for this as do the Headless Horsemen in addition to uncollectibles that are going to be added to your deck in week 2 and week 3. That's 6800 tickets, some PvP with Battlings can give you 7000 tickets, Dungeons with Battlings can give you 6000 tickets and Bosses or Barracks attacking those Battlings can give you another 7000 tickets. So Battlings overall can give you access to 26800 more tickets. That's still not even close enough to unlock the Headless Horseman, but week 2 is going to come to rescue, because week 2 is going to unlock a lot more tickets, and the special minis in week 2 and week 3, those are going to be added to your decks in pairs. So changing each day, there's going to be a pair here, pair, pair, pair. So each of those minis are going to make more than one appearance. And that's good because there are challenges related to those minis that are going to give you a lot of tickets. Plague Bomber, 7,000 tickets. Bone Bomb, 7,000 tickets. Pumpkin Spice, 5,000. Oh my god, 5,000. And Witching Tree is going to give you 12,000 tickets. And add those and then the Werewogen modifier. There's some Werewogen challenges that can give you 15,500 tickets. And that means that week two is going to unlock 51,500 tickets. And that means that at week, at the end of week two, doing the stuff for week one, keeping logging in, keeping getting daily offers, doing the battling stuff, doing the temporary mini stuff, doing the Werewogen stuff, you have access to around 100,000 tickets. And Headless Horseman was just less than 85,000 tickets, so you can get Headless Horseman week 2 as free to play. And once you have Headless Horseman, you unlock some more challenges, and then there's still some more that are going to be unlocked with week 3, and that's basically the event. Then I have some notes about the challenges themselves. Probably the grindiest challenge is kill skeletons with skeletons in Darkshire. So Darkshire is the middle quest in week 1 and week 3, and this only works in that map and only with regular skeletons, not with skeleton mages. So if you are Baron Rivender, you want to unequip the talent for skeleton mages, you don't want to use Ritual of Rhyme with the skeleton party, just getting regular skeletons, Cult of the Damned is great with Necromancer so that it summons more skeletons when it kills stuff so that you can just have skeletons attacking more skeletons. But yeah, that, that one is quite a huge grind. 
Then there's a challenge called create jack-o'-lanterns. What does that even mean? Well, that actually means that when any mini, including enemy minis, creates a pumpkin, then you get progress. So if you put Plague Farmer into your deck, Plague Farmer throws pumpkins. Those are the jack-o'-lanterns, and that gives you progress with the quest. However, currently the Plague Farmer range talent is bugged with this quest, which means that if you have the range talent, you're not getting any progress. But if you unequip the talent or use any other talent, then your Plague Farmer is going to do fine. Then there's the Survive Darkshire missions, and that only works in the middle quest and only on week 1 and week 3. But I don't know how easy it is to survive the horseman, so you probably this is probably the one that you really want to knock out during week 1. The Defeat Necromancer's challenge luckily works in all content, including PvP. So you can PvP if you can find somebody who plays Necromancers, though. Yeah, that would be a bit tricky. You can also go into something like Heroic Baron Riven there. So any heroic mission where you know that the enemy has Necromancers in their deck and it works. And the Darkshire quest also has Necromancers. So at least there's plenty of places where you can find them. Finally, weeks 2 and 3 should also add some skill-based challenges to the event with Defeat of Evogen in under 2 minutes, Defeat of Evogen in under 1 minute, and then survive against Headless Horseman for periods of time and then ultimately defeat the Headless Horseman. So these are hopefully going to be skill-based challenges because there is so much grinding in this event. But I will check these out when they are available during week 2 and week 3 and make specific guides for them if they are worth that. So I've got you covered on that aspect as well. So Hello's End is a pretty interesting event. There's a lot of new stuff for the game. The new map, the new types of challenges, new minis. So a lot of fun things in this one. But there's also a whole bunch of downsides with the way the reward tree works, with the pay to win aspects of this event and with the sheer amount of grinding that there's just so many challenges here that are grinding, grinding, grinding. So I'm a little bit ambivalent about this event. In some ways, Blizzard has taken steps forward. This is definitely the event that has the most new content that we have had in a single event, but also some of the functionality of the event has taken a step back. But yeah, that's Hello's End anyway, and I do look forward to playing with the new minis and I will review them as well in the near future. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.